Today I'm going to show you how to use the professional hand press. Hi, I'm Alex and this is Ginger Head & Co, my sewing vlogger. Today we're going to talk about this machine, so a hand press, it's called a professional hand press. How professional it is, I'm not quite sure, but I'm not professional, I can use it. The only thing that I wanted to mention is that you can regulate the force, the impact of that. So how hard you press using this screw here, right? The second one, the one that is moving at the moment. It's important because, well, I'm not using it in the video, so you can probably see that the smaller rivets are going to be pressed too hard. So if you want to press something smaller, you need to loosen that. The only other thing that you will need to regulate is the die. So the T-bar has the die slot here and you put the dies here. So you will need an Allen key for that. You will put it here, well, unscrew it first, screw it back. That's important because the top and bottom die need to be aligned. So every time you change the die, check if they're aligned. If they're not, you're not going to be very successful. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this press for inserting eyelets, rivets, and snaps. First, I'm going to cut out some holes. I'm using four millimeters cutting dies. There is always a drop in die that goes into the bottom hole and the threaded die that we screw into the threaded top hole. So you can't go wrong. You don't have to buy all sizes of cutters. The smaller ones will work for smaller sizes, bigger ones for bigger sizes. Just make sure the hole is not bigger than the size of your eyelet, grommet or the stud post. It's always a good idea to use interfacing. Tear away interfacing will work great if you don't want it to be seen on the wrong side. So you can cut holes in interfacing as well. I'm cutting out my holes in denim. My base is the drop-in die and the cutter is the threaded die. So the holes are cut from the top. It's useful to remember about it and cut the holes with the wrong side of the fabric up as the one against the base can sometimes look smoother but it's never a big issue. There are holes, nobody will ever see them. My dies are not perfectly aligned here but I want to quickly show you more so the holes will do. Also the press should be on a perfectly even surface but it's easier for me to record it here against the plain background. It's also a good idea to keep a sample of attached snaps, grommets or rivets together with the set of dies in their size. You'll know immediately what type and size everything is. I also keep a short description with uh, each set. I'll start with the grommets, also known as eyelets in some shops. The two-part eyelet is a grommet. One part one is called an eyelet. I'm using 8mm ones here but it works the same for any size. The drop-in die is for the bottom, the threaded one for the top and the grommet and the washer. They can be in various sizes and colors of course. I'm going to use the silver ones. We've got our fabric with cut out holes. The grommet part of the grommet goes on the bottom die, the fabric, the interfacing and then the washer. So the grommet is the one with a bit of a post. The grommet is the taller one. Anyway, grommets, fabric, interfacing, washers, and then press. The press should really stand on an even surface. It can actually be bolted to the work table, but that's okay. It's done and we can remove our dies, unscrew the top one and just pull out the bottom one. And I keep them all together with the description and with a sample of what they're used for. Let's move on to snaps and you can use metal and plastic snaps, ring snaps, spring snaps, prong snaps, pearl snaps with this machine. <laughs> they might require different dies for different types of snaps. You can actually use bigger size of dies with slightly smaller size of snaps. If the difference is one millimeter or less, the dies will work as long as everything is perfectly centered. Generally or usually you have four elements to the snap, cap and socket and then stud and post. Let's start with the stud and the post. So first the post, fabric sandwich in between and then the stud. 
and it would be useful to use interfacing again but I'm not using it in here and it's done and obviously if you have more stat and post pairs do them first before you change the dice but I can change mine now pull the bottom die out and unscrew the top one keep them together now the cap and the socket cap on the bottom socket on top fabric in between and I'm going to change the dice as you can see I've been using this die or oh, this die set a lot the threaded die on top that drop in on the bottom I'm using 15 millimeter spring snaps but as I said this hand press can be used for installing various snaps in various sizes and in various colors always use the size that is right for your project the thickness of fabric or leather should determine the size of the snap anyway the cap on the bottom then the fabric and I would normally add interfacing or a patch of leather or something like that then the socket and press and now it's done and you can check if they work together I'll cut that in half and you can put them together and see <laughs> if they hold this would normally be a stress point so an extra layer of interfacing or something like scrap of leather would really help because you are going to be opening and closing it quite often okay let's put these away remember to store them together it will save you time and frustration now some double cap rivets these are four and a half mil I haven't got small cutters so I'm going to use my owl for that for cutting holes you can use different types of rivets with this press here I'm using double cap rivets with a cap part and a post or shaft part the post or shaft goes inside the cap and because I'm not willing to spend 15 pounds on a cutter I'm using my owl I'm putting the cup through one into the other the post or the shaft inside of the cup you can't go wrong really and the dice are very similar so the only difference really is that one is threaded and that goes on the top part and then the other drop in that goes on the bottom and you put the flat side the, the flatter cup on the bottom and you press and it's done you don't need a lot of force to be honest I should probably adjust the force but I can't be bothered it's not squashed it looks all right it would be much better if the press was on a flat surface but I'm going to show you even smaller three and a half mil or three mil no three and a half mil so again I don't have small cutters so I'm using my owl and that force should be too much but we'll see how it works if it squashes my rivets so again well I'm putting the dice in the threaded one on top the drop in on the bottom <laughs> it really is that simple the changeover is also extremely quick I would recommend bolting it to some working surface because it works much better than nothing wobbles the t-slots and alignment are very precise so I wouldn't normally leave it like that I would adjust it it's not centered precisely Precisely. and I'm going to center it so I'm going to show you how to change the t-bar to be centered for my tiny little rivets and again there is nothing complicated in it you use the allen key you unscrew the screws there on the sides of the t-bar and you align it and that's it and when you are happy with the result when you think that it's perfectly aligned you can do a sample on a scrap of fabric or leather or whatever you work with and you can rivet your bag or whatever project you are riveting okay so let's have a go again we'll see if it looks better my tiny little rivets and I'm pressing and it's done <laughs> I actually make it look harder than it really is and it looks fine I can actually show you smaller snaps because I wanted to tell you that before you install the snaps you need to make sure that they're on the right side of your garment so you can close them the cap is on the right side the socket on the wrong side the stud on the right side and the post on the wrong side then the garment will be functional and aesthetically pleasing okay I've changed the dice for the snap dice and I'm not going to use the cutter I'm just going to make a hole and try my best to, to do it properly these are smaller snaps so these are seven and a half and I'm going to show you that it still works it's super easy I just wanted to make sure that you understand that using the press is extremely easy everybody can do it there is no learning curve or anything to it really I've done the cap and the socket the cap on the bottom socket on top fabric in between and now the stud in the post the, we've got the post fabric sandwiched in between and the stud and I can quickly 
list advantages and disadvantages of the press. So advantages, it's very, very easy to use and uh, you can change over the dice very quickly. You can adjust the, the working height, you can bolt it to the work surface and always have it flat. You can adjust the T-slot precisely, really precisely. The stroke force can also be adjusted. Disadvantages, well, it's very heavy, it's 20 kilos, so it's really heavy. It's quite expensive, so I paid 300 pounds, but I got 19 sets of dice. But other than that, I don't think there are any disadvantages. I've been using it for two years and I love it. The snaps are done, so that's it. If you have any questions, I can make another video, more detailed one. Thank you.